Hello there, the British government is cautiously approaching the EU again in order to clear up the unresolved issues of Brexit so that the economy can pick up again. The EU and UK said they needed more time to continue scoping corrections to their long-standing dispute over the post-Brexit trade rules in Northern Ireland. European Commission Vice President Maro Sefcovic and British Foreign Secretary James Cleverly met via video conference on Monday to, as they put it, explore the breadth of the challenges we have faced over the last two years and the need to find solutions together to address the real problems facing all communities in Northern Ireland and address them comprehensively, they said in a joint statement. Officials had hoped the scoping exercise launched last Monday could be complete by this Monday, paving the way for so-called tunnel discussions, the final part of intensified talks to reach an agreement on the protocol. Instead, they agreed that the search for a solution to the dispute should proceed in a constructive and cooperative spirit, carefully considering each other's legitimate interests, as the joint statement said, which just means haven't achieved anything yet. Brussels and London have long been at odds over the Northern Ireland Protocol, which is part of the post-Brexit divorce deal that will subject Northern Ireland, which is still legally a part of the UK, to the EU's hygiene and regulatory standards for goods. The agreement means goods will flow freely across Ireland's politically sensitive land border, but goods imported into Northern Ireland from the rest of the UK will have to be checked. Anger by British trade unionists in, no, not the trade unionists, just the unionists in Northern Ireland at these rules had led to the collapse of the region's power sharing government. Early on Monday, number 10 Downing Street appeared to downplay hopes of an impending breakthrough, saying there were gaps between London and Brussels. Yeah, there always were and there always will be. They will continue to look at any progress made, is what Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's official spokesman said when asked after the meeting. But as we have said on several occasions, there are still gaps in our position that need to be filled in order to address the full range of issues created by the protocol, no, created by Brexit and the Tories. Senior government officials in Belfast and Dublin noted the brevity of Monday's joint statement and its generally positive tone, reflecting the constructiveness and seriousness of the ongoing dialogue between London and Brussels. I still say nothing has really happened there. They said it set the stage for Britain's Secretary for Northern Ireland, Chris Heaton-Harris, to once again postpone his often threatened deadline for Northern Ireland's divided politicians to form a new cross-community government in line with the 1998 peace accord. An announcement from Heaton Harris is expected later this week. This is sort of an watch this room announcement. The language is consistently positive and delivered in keeping it all together. The lack of detail simply shows that all outstanding issues are still being discussed, but it's clearly a positive environment in contrast to this time last year, said a Dublin government official. The same official pointed out that during their phone call last week, European Commission Vice, uh, no, in this time the President, Ursula von der Leyen, and she told Irish Prime Minister the Taoiseach Leod Varadkar that the EU intends to keep information on the state of negotiations to a bare minimum until an agreement could be reached. The settlement of the dispute over Brexit rules in Northern Ireland presents an early diplomatic and political test for Sunak, who could face opposition from staunch Brexiteers within his own party to any agreement. EU and UK negotiators have made progress on tariffs and are on the verge of finalizing a solution to this long-running dispute over tariff quotas that have prevented Northern Ireland from benefiting from reduced UK import tariffs on products such as steel. And people said that who are familiar with the conversations. But in order to reach a broader agreement, Sunak must decide whether to drop the UK's long-standing call to change the role of the Court of Justice of the EU, the ECJ, which is the ultimate arbiter of disputes over the protocol. This topic does not play a prominent role in the current discussions 
as it is not included in Sefcovic's negotiating mandate. For the EU, this can't go, period. Diplomats have warned that Sunak must prepare unionists in Northern Ireland, as well as Eurosceptic backbenchers in his own Conservative Party, before attempting to reach a deal that fails to take into account their calls for the ECJ's role to be abolished or reduced. No, it will be abolished in the end. Brexiteers in the Conservative Party's European Research Group of MPs, the ERG, are not yet worried about the state of talks, according to two members. I'm not worried about Sunak at all. I think he understands the problems. He also understands that if the DUP cannot be satisfied, then any new agreements are futile because they will not restore institutions to Northern Ireland, which is the crucial point, said one of them. Now, the crucial point is that the DUP don't understand politics, come to their senses, but they never will. London and Brussels are talking to each other, again, serious, practically for the first time since 2016. And terrorists between the British Isles and Northern Ireland, they can negotiate very pragmatically there. And the European Court of Justice, it's actually not that bad. And this turn of events should not come as a surprise, given that Rishi Sunak's government is ultimately concerned with sheer survival at the moment. The complete collapse of the critical infrastructure in England and Wales, the the galloping impoverishment of millions of people, the negative economic development. Only through hard opportunistic pragmatism will the conservatives, who have long been bled dry, be able to save themselves. And Downing Street knows that now. The dream of a Brexit empire still lingers in the House of Commons, especially with the ERG. And in Northern Ireland, the unionist Neanderthals are trying to stop evolution. But their demise and the Tories being voted out of office at the next opportunity are all but certain. And the EU will hopefully, pragmatically, provide help there. Because the death of Brexit means the survival of Northern Ireland, Europe and the people of Britain. And thinking about this, on Monday evening, the EU Parliament celebrated the 30th anniversary uh, anniversary of the European single market. Yes, it, it still faces immense challenges. When Europe experienced a free market revolution on January 1st, 1993, the big ceremony that Europeans like to hold was missing because the creation of the European single market caused optimism, but it was also accompanied by uncertainty. 30 years later, the EU is proud of the single economic area. The Conservative MEP Andreas Schwab praised it as a real success story. His parliamentary colleague from the European Social Democrats, René Repasi, called it the beating heart of the EU. And the chair of the Internal Market Committee, Anna Cavazzini from the Greens, spoke of an engine of European integration. On Monday evening, the EU parliamentarians celebrated the anniversary in Strasbourg. And the figures prove them right. The single market, which guarantees the free movement of people, goods, services and capital, which the British wanted to leave, and which in addition to the 27 member states also includes Norway, Liechtenstein, Iceland and Switzerland, encompasses almost 500 million consumers. The joint gross domestic product last year was around 14.5 trillion euros. Apart from the unifying effect of the system, it gives citizens the opportunity to travel, live, work, study and do business throughout the Union. The internal market has cleared the jungle of national regulations and at the same time strengthened consumer rights for everyone, said Schwab. He's the spokesman for the CDU-CSU group on internal market policy. In fact, the old Europe of the 12 members was characterized by queues at the borders, custom checks and competing national regulations. For example, many hundreds of millions of customs forms had to be filled out every year. With the introduction of the single market, thousands of national regulations ended up in the waste bin and from from one day to the next. And what used to be foreign policy has now become domestic policy. Social rights for employees, information on maximum working hours, harmonization of consumer protection rules and guidelines for manufacturers. With every crisis, the internal market has developed further, said Green politician Cavazzini. And not only that, thanks to the combined economic power, 
According to Schwab, global standards can be set, especially in the digital world. He says, the EU is doing pioneering work worldwide, both in data protection and in terms of trustworthiness and fairness on digital platforms such as Facebook or TikTok. Great Britain's exit from the EU showed how far the interdependencies within the economic project reach. Suddenly, companies are annoyed by customs duties again, tourists have to put up with travel restrictions and business representatives complain about a number of hurdles that have made trade relations between the island and the continent more expensive and complicated since Brexit. Despite all the jubilation about the single market, the past few years have also revealed its weaknesses. For example, at the beginning of the pandemic, border crossings were closed in an uncoordinated manner, leading to chaos and empty supermarket shelves. Russia's war against Ukraine also served as a wake-up call for many, particularly on the energy issue. The internal market must be made crisis-proof, demanded, demanded Schwab. And the Social Democrat Ray Pasi also referred to the downside. Some citizens also experienced the single market with its free competition as a place where wages are under pressure, jobs are relocated and multinational companies can optimize taxes, as he put it. Therefore, the social component must be strengthened in the coming years. That's his point of view. However, EU representatives see US President Joe Biden's subsidy policy as the greatest threat at the moment. With the so-called Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA, Washington wants to subsidize green technologies made in the USA, as well as electric cars, batteries, energy-intensive industries, and renewable energy projects with hundreds of billions of dollars. How should the EU react to the protectionism of the Americans and thus save a little bit of the internal market. While Germany in the lead apparently wants to relax the rules for state aid in the EU, many of the smaller partners fear being left behind by the rich EU countries in a race. EU competition, uh, com competition, competition Commissioner Margarete Vestager warned that a massive increase in subsidies harbored the risk of a fragmentation of the internal market. The authorities in Brussels intend to present concrete pros proposals shortly. Yes, it does have its weaknesses. And if you can find the video again after the heck now, it, it still should be there. I made a video on the top 10 benefits of the EU and a video on the top 10 downsides of the EU a long time ago. So I'm not just uh, some, some parrot here for the EU to just say everything is golden. No, it isn't. But it still is much better than many alternatives. The EU does need reforms, and I mean this in a, in a, in a proper way. The, the, some right-wing populist parties in Europe now switched away from leaving the EU, thanks to Brexit, by the way, because they can't, after, after everyone can see what Brexit does to a country, even they can't sell it to their voters anymore to leave the EU. But now they're all talking about reform, but they mean something very different with reform than what I mean. But there are still things that are not working the way they should. There are reforms that are needed in the EU, and the EU is currently working on it, sometimes far too slow. I admit that. No problem. But it's still the best we have at the moment, and it's much better than many alternatives. And from inside, you can work on the reforms and to make it better. From the outside, you have no influence at all. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.